So for the second time in three weeks, the Ravens getting ready to take on these Browns again. And y'all already know what time it is. It wouldn't be right if I didn't bring in my guy, a very, very special guest to cover these Browns and let us know how he feels about them heading into this AFC North matchup. Let's run it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, we got a special guest in the building. Having him on was so nice, we decided to do it twice. Welcome back, Quincy, as we get ready to talk about these Ravens taking on the Browns for a second time in three weeks. But appreciate you joining us. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. You know, I always like to be here. The response was so overwhelmingly positive last time when I was mm -hmm. on. Um, and it was so clear that Raven fans just love me so much. And <laughs> I'm their favorite uh, non-Raven fan. You know what I mean? Look, I like Raven fans. I like how y'all get down. My auntie a Raven fan. You know what oh. I mean? So so I rock with y'all a little bit. A little bit. Except for when y'all talk about wide receivers. Y'all be tripping on the wide receivers. But everything <laughs> else, I rock with y'all on. I rock with y'all. <laughs> All right. So um, before we get into it, let everybody know where they can find you at. YouTube oh, yeah. channel, Twitter, all that good stuff. YouTube.com slash Quincy Carrier, Q-U-I-N-C-Y. You could just put that in your search bar. Or you can find me on uh, Twitter at Quinn, K-W-E-N underscore C. Um, I'll probably, if the Browns win this week, I'll probably be retweeted by, by some angry Raven fans. So don't worry. You'll find me on Twitter uh, <laughs> because, you know, we ain't beat the Ravens in a while. So if we do it, I'm going uh, to... You got to celebrate these moments when they're there because you never know what's going to come back, right? Because when Nick Chubb ran that thing on y'all in 2018, I thought 2019, I thought that would be forever. I was like, oh, this is forever. We dominating the Ravens now. Mm -hmm. We own this new part. And then what do y'all do? Win like 14 games in a row? So, yeah. yeah. Then so, the yeah. Browns went 6-10 that year. So, mm. you know, I'm just going to celebrate them victories <laughs> <laughs> to the <laughs> fullest extent. When they have it, Raven fans, it ain't nothing personal. <laughs> yes, um, and going into this game, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he's only lost to the Baker Mayfield Browns that one time. Other than that, he's him and the Ravens been taking care of business. But now, uh, how are you feeling about the Browns coming off a of bye week? And, and even before the bye week, coming off of the game that they had against the Ravens, because it just seemed like the, the Ravens and Lamar were like, here, Browns, you take it. But the Browns were like, oh, no, we don't want it. And the, Lamar and them, they, they kept giving it to them. But the Browns were like, oh, no, no, thank you. How are you feeling about this Browns team heading into this game after that and after the bye? This team this year is not to be trusted. Like, this yeah. Cleveland Browns team this year, just flat out. Like, I love them. I love the Browns. I love Kevin Stefanski. I love Baker Mayfield. I love Nick Chubb. I love Kareem Hunt. But the offense is not to be trusted. They cannot be trusted. They have proven themselves unworthy of any trust. I mean, this is not the first time where a team has begged us to pull away and the Browns offense refused to do it, right? This is one. The Detroit game was one where we refused to just score the extra touchdown we needed to take the run game out. The Minnesota game where we won by seven just because Minnesota stunk more on offense than we were stinking. <laughs> like, you know, there there have been a play – the, the, the um, Chargers game where they scored a bunch of points – but they were in an opportunity where, like, they could have just pulled away with the game. They would have got one more touchdown. They don't get the extra touchdown. It's the Chiefs game. Just get one more touchdown. You might win that game. We fumbled a snap on a punt. So they're not to be trusted. The offense is not to be trusted. I have no idea what to make of this bye week for this team because I cannot mm. trust this team this year because they have not been trustworthy on the offensive side of the ball all year. Defensively, I got more trust in them, which is ironic because if you ever hear Browns fans talk, they always want to fire Joe Woods because they got a first down scored on them or something like that. Nah, man, Joe Woods has been solid. This defense has been solid. This defense has been the only thing that I could kind of depend on. But everything else about this team, special teams, and especially this offense, cannot be trusted. Just absolutely mm. cannot be. What you saw – Last week, Raven fans where this Browns team, well, not last week, two weeks ago, Raven fans where this Browns team just flat out refused to score. That's more that's closer to the norm this year 
than the performances they were putting up at the end of 2020 last year were. Because they have had like three or four games like that this year. They've had one game that looked like the end of 2020 last year. So that's just the conundrum that they've been in. It's not really explainable. I know people try to tell me, oh, it's because Baker's hurt. Oh, it's because we're down an offensive tackle. I don't think those are sufficient excuses for putting up like seven points on four turnovers. You know what I mean? Um, or, mm. or seven points versus the Detroit Lions or seven points versus the Minnesota Vikings or, or et cetera, et cetera, right? Like the injuries, yes, Baker's hurt. I get it. But some of this stuff got to do more about execution than it really does about, you know, just individual players one way or the other. But yeah, the offense overall is not, not to be trusted. Mm. So it sounds like you got little trust for the offense, but big trust uh, for that Browns defense. And that Browns defense, um, they, again, they forced four interceptions. They got four interceptions on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens uh, last week. Now, do you think, not necessarily can they get a repeat performance, because, I mean, I I don't expect a repeat performance of Lamar, and I'm sure you don't expect a repeat performance performance from Lamar like that either but how much confidence does that give you heading into this game you know it's weird it's weird because like there is the logical like analyst in me that is like okay well the Browns prove that they have a lot of things they can do move around to make the Ravens life difficult there's the other part in me the illogical fan part of me that I can't scrub out that's like man Lamar threw all his interceptions in that one game he gonna throw for a couple of years to the Browns at least (laughs) so what's there left for him to do except for to do what he has always done against the Cleveland Browns I know Lamar is struggling right now and I don't know if the reasons he's struggling are as simple as some people put it out to be like people are really just making it seem like this blitz thing is a new thing for Lamar Jackson that he cannot handle I don't know if it's that simple. I mean, like, I don't know if it's that specifically. I don't know if it's that easy to pinpoint that the blitz, it's what's messing him up. I have to think that there's something else that is not really as related to the blitz as people are making it to be that's affecting that, that could change at any moment to notice because we were saying the same thing, right, earlier this year about a guy like Patrick Mahomes. Oh, the NFL figured it out. Okay, yeah, you just got to roll three safeties over the top or go cover four or whatever it is that people were saying was the solution for Patrick Mahomes. It just turned out now Patrick Mahomes was just slumping for a little bit. And I think with quarterbacks more than any other position in the NFL, right, they tend to slump like pitchers in, in baseball, right, where a pitcher would just have a bad month or a bad couple of outings, and then their next outing, they're good, right? Like it's just one of those things where it's there one week, it's not there the other. Russell Wilson, he's been like inexplicably bad for the last two years. Mm-hmm. Nobody's really noticed, right? Um, you know, it's one of those positions that is a little bit more cyclical than like wide receiver where you can't have a bad stretch at wide receiver because you'll end up on the bench. For um, Lamar at the quarterback position, I just feel like this is just a bad stretch for him. He's probably going to bounce back and – and I have a healthy fear of him, so I'm just going to anticipate that he's going to play at a high level, um, Lamar Jackson level. Now, what does that mean for this defense and what they can do against him? I think, yes, Miles is awesome on that side, and then having Davion be able to set the edge on the other side, that's very, very important. But the most important player when it comes to stopping what the Ravens do at their best has been JOK. I think he is tremendous, mm-hmm. number 28 in Brown. Um, he has been – Everything he was advertised to be coming out of Notre Dame, sideline to sideline speed. I mean, he's a demon on the field. Like, he is a monster out there. He'll go and disrupt screen plays. He ain't even supposed to be there. He'll get sacks he ain't supposed to get. JOK is the real deal there. And I think he and his athleticism takes away a lot of the things the Ravens try to use to try to get back on rhythm, right? Sometimes they try to go to that screen left or they try to just go outside run with Lamar. Well, JOK is fast enough to get out there on that edge and set it and turn that play back in towards the tackles, which then condenses the play and allows, puts Lamar in more of a box. Now, Lamar can normally get out of that box, um, but the more you make Lamar have to work for it, the better. Um, and eventually you're going to tire them out or you're going to be able to get him more often, right? The more he has to stop and start. So, JOK, I think that's going to be the biggest thing. Obviously, Miles Garrett is a big deal. The Ravens know that. No team 
puts more resources on Miles Garrett than the Ravens. By the way, that one sack he had was ridiculous. He got through like a triple team to get to Lamar <laughs> on that one. I was like, wow. Oh, <laughs> but man. Uh, yeah, so you know, look, Lamar. I mean, you know, Miles Garrett. That that's a problem they know they're gonna have, right? They're gonna anticipate that. Jadavion Clown, that's a problem they're going to try to um, anticipate for. But you can't really anticipate the problems that JOK is going to put on you or the stress that JOK is going to put on the defense. Um, and that's something that can really put you over the top and help you beat the Ravens, even if Lamar is, you know, what I'm just going to assume playing at a Lamar Jackson type level and kind of off of this slump that he's on. Uh, yeah. So. That's going to be something that I think really can play itself out, especially since they're giving JOK a lot more responsibility to put him at middle linebacker, to playing him all over the place. So I think that's going to be interesting. Also, he's going to match up against Mark Andrews every once in a while, too. Mm. So matching that speed for speed with JOK. And yeah, I, I did see, I remember in the last game, um, I was very impressed with how he caught Hollywood. Now he took a perfect angle. But he caught Hollywood in the open field. And I was like, oh, okay, that's him. <laughs> um, so he, he's definitely uh, as advertised. Now, hopefully in this game, he doesn't do anything advertised worthy. But we'll see. Now, flipping it back to the Browns offense. Uh, a specific player who in the last Browns-Ravens game, I didn't think it was a catch. I thought it was a drop when I looked at the replay. I still thought it was a drive that like confirmed it for me, but they said, no, 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 touch that. David Njoku. David Njoku going into this game, how important of a piece do you think he is going to be for the Browns? He should be a more important piece than he's been all year. Um, I did a video where I was talking about the small things that this offense can do. And one of the things I can do, they can do is really condense the amount of players that they have on the field. Right now, the Browns, they try to get too cute. You know what I mean? They got the fourth string running back out there. They put out the fifth string wide receiver out there. They got all these packages with all these specialty players in there. And just go back to your bread and butter. You got Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, David Njoku, DPJ, and Jarvis Landry, those are your guys. Those, those are the dudes who should be on the field about 99% of the time. Um, and the other 1% is when you're punting, right? So those should be those guys should be on the field one way or another in one combination or another. And we should really cut out all these extra packages. We got Anthony Schwartz, and JoJo Nats, and taking the end around. Why? Why do we have that on there? Like, we don't need it at this point. You know, we don't even focus on the playmakers that we do have. And I think that David and Joku should be the feature tight end. Sometimes they catch themselves trying to do stuff with Austin Hooper. I think they should just see and put David and Joku in those Mark Andrews type situations, in those um, Travis Kelsey situations, see if he can handle it, right? Because he's the one tight end on the roster that people actually worry about, right? When the Ravens go up against David and Joku, they're like, okay, now David can make some plays. He's an athlete. He, if, if there's a tight end that could take over the game, like those top tier tight ends that the Ravens and the Chiefs and you know other teams have, then it's probably going to be David and Joker. It's more, it's got to be David and Joker. He's the only one on the roster that has that kind of potential. So you have to give him more plays um, to either prove you right on that potential or prove you wrong on that potential. Because one, you got to see what you got there. And two, if you're going to run all these tight ends on the field, like the Cleveland Browns insist on doing, right? They run these 12 personnel um, packages where they got three tight ends on the field, one wide receiver. If you're going to do that, you need to have a dynamic threat at tight end. And mm -hmm. you need to have that guy out there as a dynamic threat. And that guy needs to be David and Joku because he's the only one with any type of wide receiver skill set. I like that they're going to him in the end zone more often. I like that they're giving him more 50-50 balls. Let's see what we got here with David and Joku, right? So, yeah, I think David and Joku for this, uh, well, it's not the second half of the season, but this post bye week portion of the Cleveland Browns season, I think he should get a lot more targets. I think, honestly, again, condense these these player personnel packages. Why do we have a bunch of dudes running on and off the field all the time? Why are we always late in our account? Why are we getting all these procedural penalties? A lot of this is because too many different players are on the field for too many different packages and too many different variations of different packages. So we just we need to simplify for a procedural standpoint and you need to simplify just so you can get the most out of the very talented players that you do have um, because that's been an issue, especially in the passing game for this team. Mm. Speaking of simplifying, um, you're talking about simplifying the Browns' offense. I talk about simplifying the Ravens' defense uh, because they 
They are very aggressive defense. Wink loves to, loves to, loves to blitz. Live by, die by. But now Marlon Humphrey, he's out. Um, so I would expect a bit of a more simpler uh, defense to go against the Browns uh, come this Sunday. Now, speaking of this Sunday and beyond, what do you feel like the Browns need to do, not only this Sunday, but for the rest of the season, uh, just to really stay alive and to make some noise? And do you think that they can? I mean, they're, 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 they're capable of it because the talent is still there. Like, they yeah. still have – I mean, you just close your eyes and look at that defense. It's like, oh, my goodness. Like, they should be a lot better than they are off the strength of that defense alone. You got a guy like Miles Garrett playing at a level that he is. Um, on top of a, De uh, a Denzel Ward playing at the level he is, you have a healthy Jadavion Clowney for most portion of the year, knock on wood. Um, and then, you know, you, you got Malik McDowell. You got guys stepping up like JOK. Like, you have – a ton of things just on the defense, and that's not even supposed to be the strength of this team. It's supposed to be the offense. Offense yeah. has been a complete weakness, though, um, this whole year. So, you know, yeah, they can do it. What they need to do is what they haven't done all year, play clean football. You know, yeah. play a clean, well-executed game of football on both sides and not get in their own way. If they don't do that, they can win these next five games. They can be in the playoffs. They might even win the division. Who knows? Um, but, you know, it's a tall ax for this team because they just have not done that this entire year. They have not looked like a well-executing, well-coached um, team this year. They just have looked sloppy at every step in the way. You could say against uh, Cincinnati, they looked a little bit cleaner, but even in some red zone possessions, they didn't really look clean like they were last year. Um, but that's what it's going to take. It's going to take for at least the regular season, five well-executed, clean games of football. And while that might sound simple, for this team, it's been the, the most complicated thing for them to do because they just have not been able to do it. Can they do it? Absolutely. They're more than capable of doing it. Will they do it? Again, man, like I said at this beginning of this video, there's a reason why I'm here saying this to Raven fans. The Browns, are not, the Browns offense is not to be trusted because they have proven every step of the way. They cannot be trusted to do that, right? You cannot leave the Browns offense at home alone. They have not been trusted that they can feed themselves <laughs> and, and, and get the mail and lock the door without breaking something, right? You came home and your TV was broken. That's what I am, right? Like I left my kid at home thinking they was old enough to take care of things, and then I come back and my flat screen's broken. How it get broke? Nobody want to tell me that's the Browns offense. That is what it's been. It's been like, that's the experience it's been, right? You think you can trust them, you come back, something's broke. So that's what it's been. That's why it makes it hard for me to think that this team's going to just magically get it together because they had an extra week. Mm -hmm. But stranger things have happened. I mean, like I pointed out on Twitter, Baker has like the weirdest splits in the world. And one of his weird splits is his post bye week splits where like he goes from like, being nine and 16 overall career to like 16 and like nine or something like that. Like his win loss record completely flips hmm. either way. We'll see with this team. I mean, they still have all the opportunity in the world, despite, you know, not playing well enough to be, be in this position uh, by the fortune of everybody else in the division, kind of not playing great football and everybody else in the AFC, not playing great football. So now they're still in a position to be able to achieve a lot of these things. It's up to them to do it. And I, 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 I just don't know if this is the team this year that's going to do it because they just haven't showed it all year. So we'll see. Yeah. And like you said, we'll see. So we'll see this Sunday uh, how this game goes. And, and one last time, uh, let everybody know where to find you at, not just on Twitter and YouTube, but this Sunday as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Raven fans, you know, you know, Engraven does his thing on game days where he uh, streams and right live reacts to the game well i've been doing that all season too so regardless of what happens right if it's a win for the ravens and you want to troll me i'll be there <laughs> live if the browns win and you want to trade in that ravens jersey for a browns <laughs> jersey and switch teams come get me style and come and be a browns fan the original Ravens, just, just come on back home <laughs> where you belong, Raven fans, because the team should have never left. Uh, but, you know, that's a conversation for another day. Y'all come back on home, rock with the Browns. Y'all could do that, too. Or if they tie, you can watch both me and the Raven try to make sense of what has been a nonsensical season. But either way, it's going to be something fun. Uh, so I appreciate you uh, coming on.
<laughs> and joining us for this uh, preview of the Browns and the Ravens. And who knows, by the way that this season has been going, you never know that we might have to do a third preview of this game. Come play. Hey, man, time. I've been waiting for that AFC championship Browns Ravens. I thought we were going to get it last year. I was, I thought we were this close to getting it. I was like, oh, we could get it because we were in opposite sides of the bracket. You guys mm -hmm. are playing the Bills. We were playing the Chiefs. I felt like, you know, we could beat the Chiefs for whatever reason. <laughs> and I felt like y'all was going to beat the Bills. I was like, oh, man. Ever T Bank Stadium. Browns, mm -hmm. Browns versus Ravens after that big Monday night football game. To go to the Super Bowl, wouldn't that be something? Who knows? The way this year goes, look, man, five weeks ago, we were talking completely different about every other team in the AFC North. So who knows? Five weeks from now, things can look drastically different with both of these teams, and we could both think that these both teams are both legitimate Super Bowl. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Exactly. Yes. Who, who knows is right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Appreciate y'all watching. Q, appreciate you joining. We out. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.